well-rested piper here. Enjoying a nice, kind of warm Thursday in Pennsylvania. It's about 45 degrees. Wet, but not raining or snowing. Just wet because we had snow and it's all melted. But I want to take the time to call attention to a video that I'm going to be putting up after this video. Where it predominantly talks about firearms. It's not a political video in any way. Just generally talking about what I like to do with them. And it being hunting season here things like that, and a recent experience I had while purchasing a firearm. I know some of my viewers are international and might not have an interest in that, or might be offended by it in some way. So, I figured I'd take the time to let you guys know that that is a video that's going to be coming up. Uh, so if you want to skip that one, you can, and I won't be offended in any way. Now that that's out of the way, smoking some McBaron Dark Twist Roll Cake in the cob that my mom got me for my birthday. This is actually the first pipe uh, that I ever smoked out of as an adult. When I was 17 or 18, my friend's granddad passed away. And he gave me his granddad's old meerschaum that he had never smoked out of. Because he knew I was interested in pipes and cigars and things like that. And uh, being kids, we didn't really know how to smoke a pipe or what we were doing. We never even bought any pipe tobacco. I remember the first time we tried to smoke the thing. We were right down the road from where we are now because I used to live up here when I was a kid with my mom. Lived right up the road, right up there. And uh, we were down here on the road, it was nighttime. It was me, a friend of mine named Brian, and I think Probably either my friend Tom or my friend Jim. Somebody who could drive at the time and actually had a car. I apologize for the barking. My dog is being yappy. Stop. But we were out here. It was nighttime. We were in the car. Just talking, fooling around. I pull out this pipe. My friend Brian was a smoker. He smoked cigarettes. Still does. Not something that I was ever into. We didn't have any pipe tobacco. We didn't know what we were doing. So he pulls out two of his cigarettes. Which I think were Marlboro Blend 54, if that means anything to you guys. It's a type of menthol, I believe. They're in like a green and black package. Breaks them out. And we rip open the paper and shove the cigarette tobacco down inside the pipe. Didn't know that we had to pack anything. Just loose tobacco in there. 
trying to light the thing. And it's not really working. I mean, the tobacco's loose, so it just wants to burn. It also doesn't want to stay lit because it's not pushed down together. Tastes terrible. Because we have to keep putting the lighter to it. I find that cigarette tobacco tastes terrible in general. That's why I don't smoke them. I also don't like to inhale because I have asthma issues and things like that. Which probably make it unwise to smoke anything, but we all do what we do, right? We enjoy things that aren't good for us. We didn't even have anything to tamp the pipe with. You know, looking back on it, this was between 10 and 12 years ago. Really didn't know what we were doing. But like I said, we put the tobacco in there. We tried to smoke it. You got Brian coughing because he is inhaling the smoke because he's a cigarette smoker. Now, now there's no filter because it's in a pipe. It's been burning hot. Me just getting this horrible ashy taste in my mouth. And our other buddy just laughing at us because he didn't want to have anything to do with it. If it was Tom, I just don't think he really smoked. And if it was Jim, he was mostly a chewer. Either way, they didn't want anything to do with it. So, that didn't go over very well. But I never quite lost the interest in pipes. Always had it. I think I mentioned in a video earlier, probably one of my first two or three videos. My grandma bought me a corn cob pipe when I was like between three and six. Because you could just pick them up at a pharmacy. And I thought it was cool and I just liked to play with it. Obviously, I wasn't smoking at that time. My parents and grandparents weren't that irresponsible. It was just a toy to me at the time, but I always remembered it. And I always remember having like those pipe toys that you could blow bubbles with and stuff when I was a kid. Even in the 90s, toys that resembled cigarettes or cigars, pipes, were still more common. I remember I used to have this big plastic cigar that I used to walk around with. I remember when you could buy bubblegum cigars and candy cigarettes anywhere. Some specialty stores would have chocolate cigars, you know. The candy wrapper looked like a cigar. When you opened it up, it had little designs on it to make it look like a cigar, but it was just a piece of chocolate. So as, as I was growing up, my great-grandma was a smoker, my dad's a smoker, my aunt's a smoker. I was surrounded by smoke all the time. It was never something that we thought about. And so seeing as it's become so, so stigmatized in the last 15, 20 years, some of these things I'm talking about might not bring memories up for some of the younger kids out there. But to me, Things like that were common. And so, back to the pipe that I got from my friend. We tried that one time. We gave up. Which is fine. But I kept the pipe. I kept it in its little case. Most Meerschaum pipes come in a case that's shaped for them. Uh, it had it. And uh, put it away, really hit it somewhere because I didn't want my parents to know that I had it. I kind of forgot about it. 
for maybe a year or so. And then we moved from up here down into town proper. Into a big house. And we moved a lot closer to my friend Pat and it was with my friend Pat that I started to experiment more with different tobacco. Mind you, not cigarettes. I don't smoke cigarettes. But uh, he does. Didn't at the time, but does now. But it was right around that time that hookahs got really big, at least in my area. Maybe all of the U.S. I don't know how popular they've been everywhere. But that was the new craze that hit our area. Hookahs, water pipes. I think predominantly from India. I could be wrong about that. But what it is, if you don't know, it's almost like a vase that you put water in. And then on top of that is a metal pipe that draws smoke down and it sits on this big thing that has a big rubber grommet on it that you push down into the vase. Hook hoses up to these little tubes and you put a bowl, a big clay bowl on the top that sits on a gasket. You fill it up with a wet tobacco mixture or a wet herbal mixture that they call shisha. And what it is, <clears throat> it's just a tobacco that's heavily flavored with a liquid. normally in fruit flavors and uh, it's too wet to light on fire you can't smoke it so what you do is you take coals and they have these quick light coals they just look like charcoal pouches pouches not pouches charcoal pieces they're charcoals not grilling charcoals don't use those you'll kill yourself Not that doing this is safe in any way, no matter what kind of charcoal you use, but don't use grilling charcoals. But you use these charcoals, they sell them. They're called quick lights, and they also have natural coals that are a lot harder to get lit and get going. But you set those ablaze, you let them smolder, they're burning, and you know how charcoal burns. <clears throat> and then you set it on top of a screen that sits over the bowl. Now you can use a screen uh, as kids. Well, we weren't kids. We were all over 18 at that time. But we used aluminum foil if we didn't have a screen, which uh, I also don't recommend doing. I'm sure that's not good for you either. But you then take the hose and you draw the smoke down through the tubes and then it's filtered by the water as filtered as it can be I guess and then you smoke you draw the way that you pull on the hose in general you draw really deep lungfuls of smoke and you blow out these massive clouds of smoke and it's a pleasant taste most of the time it's probably really bad for you we did that on and off for a few months uh, we started with herbal mixtures that were nicotine and tobacco free and they didn't taste very great so then we moved on to actual flavored tobaccos for the hookah which were great uh, we really enjoyed those right and so we did that probably for about a year on and off not heavily but we got pretty into it I still have my hookah he still has his he has a few and at that time, we also started experimenting with cigars and things like that, and so the pipe came back out. And uh, we got some smoking mixtures from a friend who went to go to a uh, reservation and got some uh, blends from some Native American folks. They're not really blends. They didn't really have tobacco. There was one called Nick Nick. 
and something else. I don't remember exactly what it was, but uh, to me, they were terrible. I didn't like that at all. We tried to smoke those out of that pipe. Also a bad experience. I remember my friend Big Rob trying to smoke the Nick Nick and throwing up just because it didn't agree with him, I guess. I don't know. So we tried that, and then my friend Pat asked, do you mind if I just borrow the pipe and keep it here? And I said, sure. No problem, man. And uh, I let him borrow it. And shortly after that, someone stole it. I think I know who did it, and I'm not going to name names here. It's not worth it. But someone took off with it. And I had never had another pipe since then. And I didn't really smoke at all since then. Once we stopped with the hookahs and the cigars and we got older, uh, I got a job away from Pat. Uh, I met my girlfriend at the time, soon to be wife. He met his wife. Start of the family, a lot of the things that we used to do, we stopped. And so did my tobacco use. Until this year in July, I came across the Mutton Chop Piper YouTube channel sometime in June. Right before <clears throat> we were due to go on vacation down to North Carolina. The whole time I was down there, I would stop at any store that I could find trying to find a corn cob pipe like this. And I had no luck. All the shops I stopped at were basically head shops. They sold, you know, basically blunt wraps or uh, flavored gas station type cigars like White Owl or Swisher Sweets, things like that. The places that did sell premium cigars only sold premium cigars. Which me and my friend Steve, who was on vacation with us, picked up a few and we had some cigars while we were down there, which was nice. But I had no luck in finding a pipe at all. So I sort of just forgot about it. Came back home. Went back to work, kept watching Mutton Chop, trying to learn about how to use a pipe because I wanted to buy one. Lo and behold, my birthday comes up in July. And my mom always likes to make me dinner for my birthday. So she invites me and my wife and the dog down for dinner and gives me a gift bag and then it was this pipe and uh, a really small pipe that's probably like this big it's also a Missouri Meerschaum but I don't know what you would do with it maybe I'll show it sometime you guys can tell me but uh, she got me this and it didn't give me any tobacco but got me the pipe and so I tried to go down to the local tobacco shop that's right by my mom's house which mostly sells cigarette tobacco and gas station cigars uh, because she said that's where she found the pipe and that's where she got it I went in and asked do you guys have any pipe tobacco and the lady was just being really rude and wouldn't answer my questions. I couldn't see anything. I couldn't even see anything like Prince Albert or Carter Hall or Half and Half or any any of the normal things like that or Smoker's Pride or Super Value. You know, any of those over-the-counter blends. And so I left and uh, placed an order at smokingpipes.com or Dunhill Elizabethan, Dunhill Standard. Seattle Pipe Club's Plum Pudding and the Captain Black's Red Sky, which is some type of cherry tobacco that I can't stand the smell of. I actually just gave that away to a friend. Uh, and so my first actual bowl of pipe tobacco was Dunhill Elizabethan, which I quite enjoyed. I was lucky to be able to get some of that before Dunhill sold out because they had already 
stopped production at that point, and it was just things that they had made, so I, I was lucky in that regard. And uh, my wife also got me my first briar for my birthday, which was on its way in the mail, and it was a big Ben. And uh, it's a good little smoker, a little small. I'm more comfortable using that now that I've, you know, charred the rim of this to hell and back. I've gotten a lot better at lighting, so I'm not afraid to damage it anymore. Uh, but that was really my first foray into pipe smoking and how it led me here. And so I figured that I would just share my journey with you. All right, guys. Until next time, happy piping. <laughs>